Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the topic of inverse functions and this video will just introduce um, some of the basics that go along with inverse functions. So the first thing we need to talk about is what a one-to-one -one function is. So by definition, a one-to-one -one function is a function in which each element in the range corresponds to only one element in the domain. And hopefully that definition seems a little bit familiar to you. Um, if you think back to the beginning of the semester, we talked about the definition of a function. And for a func something to be a function, each element in the domain had to correspond to only one element in the range. So what that meant is every x value could only have one y value as we went down. And so in order for something to be a function, it had to pass what we called the vertical line test. So if we draw a vertical line through this graph, that, and it only hits the graph once, that makes it a function. Now, for something to be one-to-one, -one, we're now adding an extra restriction. This time, it still has to pass the vertical line test, but now what also has to happen is each element in the range, so that's like a y value, can correspond to only one element in the domain. So that means we can only have each y value happen once. Here, as we go across and draw a horizontal line, we hit the graph twice, so this would be an example of a function that is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so in order for something to be one-to-one, -one, it has to pass not only the vertical line test, but also the horizontal line test. And we're going to use that in order to determine if something is um, a function or not. Um, and we'll use it in order to just, just determine um, whether or not something has an inverse. So the only way that something can have an inverse is if it is one-to-one. -one. So if a function is one-to-one, -one, then the inverse of that function is a function that completely undoes the function f. It's just the complete opposite of the original function. Um, so all of the x and y values will just flip-flop um, and all of the operations will be the opposite and they'll be done in the opposite order. So we're going to look at a few examples of functions and then we'll look at how we could find their inverses. So if we look at this example, the first thing we want to determine is whether or not it is a function. And if you look at this, um, when we determine if something's a function, we just first have to look at our input values, and we just want to make sure none of them are repeated, and in this case none of them are, um, because we want each input to have just one output. So this would be an example of a function, and so the domain of this function would be all of our input values, and I'm just going to list it like a set, so I'll just list all of those terms in order not even in numerical order, I just wrote them in the order that they are there. Now, we also can find the range of this function and recall the range is just going to be the output values um, of this function. And in this case, that will be the y values here. So again, I'm not listing them in order, I'm just listing them in the order that they're occurring. And if one were to repeat, I wouldn't have to repeat it in the range. But there's my domain and range. Now, because this is a function, um, our next question that we have to ask is, is this a one-to-one -one function? And in order to determine that, we think about our range here. Were any of those values repeated? And no, we never had a repeat value. So since none of those values were repeated, this will be a one-to-one -one function. And since it's one-to-one, -one, that means we can find the inverse. So in this case, the inverse, if you think back to the definition that we um, talked about on the previous page, 
is the complete opposite. So here our inverse is going to just reverse all of these um, points. So it will contain the point 4, negative 7. We're just flipping the x and the y values. We're not changing the signs at all. It will also include the point 9, negative 1, 5, 0, 1, negative 2, and negative 5, 5. Okay, so that will be our inverse function of this original set of points. Now, what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to now list the new domain and range of this new function. So this function that I've listed down here. So press pause and then once you've completed it, come on back and we'll look at the next example. Now, here we have another example of a set of points that we're just using as our function. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. First, determine whether or not it's a function. So determining if it's a function, we look at our inputs. None of the input values have repeated, so it will be a function. And just to repeat from before, the domain is all of these x values. And notice I didn't have to repeat any, while the range is the y values. So what I just look for as I'm writing out the range is if any values repeat. And what I'm noticing is I would get another 7 here, which I don't want to list twice. But since I got the same y value twice, that is usually an indicator that this is not a one-to-one -one function. In this case, we just want to look and see if these x values are the same. So notice we plug in a negative 2 and get 7, and we plug in a 2 and get 7. So this value in the range, the 7, has two different x values. So when we answer whether or not this is a one-to-one -one function, our answer will be no which means we cannot find an inverse. Now, hopefully, as you've worked through these few um, introductory problems, you've been able to see a couple rules. Um, so, as we look here for just a few patterns about inverses, um, a few things we can fill in. If f of x contains the point a, b, this notation here stands for the inverse of f of x. Okay, so just something for you to get used to. But if it contains the point a, b, then the inverse will contain the point b, a. Okay, then a second thing to look at was with the domain and range. And hopefully you can kind of check your work for that first example here. The domain of f of x should become the range of f inverse. And the range of f of x becomes the domain. So the two will just flip-flop with each other. Um, and those are just some key properties to remember. Usually you can figure them out once you're able to find out the inverse, but it just helps to come up with a few of those properties just from the start.